What if a propulsion system was built not to impress, but to provoke? What if its very name was a challenge to the gatekeepers of physics? Today, we're talking about the reactionless bull drive, a device that's part experiment, part statement, and all controversy. Welcome back to St. Clair Tech r and I'm Brian St. Clair. And this channel is dedicated to the hands-on exploration of unconventional propulsion systems. If you're new here, well, we don't just talk about theory. We build, we challenge, and we test. We challenge the status quo. And today's topic, it's a direct response to the critics, the skeptics, and the censors. The bull drive was born out of frustration and defiance. In a landscape where reactionless propulsion is often dismissed as pseudoscience. This device was designed to be unignorable. Its name was even a nod to the bull that gets thrown around when innovators are told that their ideas are impossible. But behind the sarcasm is a serious question. Can pure inertial propulsion actually work, even when the math says it shouldn't? Well, we know the answer. So who was Henry Bull? Henry Bull is often overlooked in the history of propulsion. Henry was a rocket scientist and an experimentalist from Syracuse, New York. In 1931, at just 21 years old, he built and rode a rocket sled across the frozen surface of Oneida Lake, a lake just north of Syracuse, New York. Bull wasn't just a thrill seeker though. He was a serious engineer. He graduated from Syracuse University with a degree in mechanical engineering. And then he went on to pioneer early rocket motor designs, including a regenerative cooling and monopropellant system things that wouldn't be actually utilized for many years. And he even worked much of his professional career with the TVA in the southern, southeastern US. But here's the twist. In 1935, Popular Science published an article about Bull's reactionless drive, a simple inertial propulsion model that defied conventional physics. And while most dismissed it as impossible, the U.S. National Archives preserved his work, including a photograph that accidentally captured one of the earliest known inertial propulsion experiments ever. The image shows a suspended cylindrical device balanced above a conical base with wires and a control box nearby. It's not a rocket. There's no flame, no nozzle. It's a bench test. It's a rig designed to measure impulse without expelling mass. And the best part, it's been hiding in plain sight for nearly a century. This photo isn't just a curiosity. It's a visual anchor. It matches the principles Bulls described in 1935, and it confirms that he wasn't just theorizing, he was actually building. The Bull Drive uses a pulsed inertial mechanism similar in principle to the Pi series, but with definite differences and deliberate exaggeration. It's loud, it's aggressive, and it's not trying to hide its motion behind subtle harmonics. Instead, it amplifies the asymmetry use, using timed mass shifts and abrupt deceleration to generate directional force. The goal, to make the effect so obvious that it can't be dismissed as vibration, friction, or error. When I ran the bull drive experience, experiments for myself, 
Well, I didn't expect elegance. I kind of expected impact. Well, that's exactly what I got. To my surprise and to everyone else's, the rig moved. It repeatedly. Not from recoil, not from imbalance, not from friction against a surface, but from a net force that mainstream science says shouldn't exist, if conventional physics had the final word anyway. Was it messy? Yes. Was it undeniable? Also yes. The bull drive isn't just a machine, it's a message. It says we're not done asking questions. It challenges the idea that only polished, peer-reviewed systems deserve attention from anyone. And it reminds us that sometimes progress starts with something raw, imperfect, something loud. So what do you think? Is the bull drive just noise? Or was it the start of something bigger? Is it the start of something bigger? Drop a comment below. I'd really love to hear your thoughts, your critiques, and your wild ideas. And if you want to see what comes next, including refinements, new builds, and deeper dives, make sure you subscribe. This journey is just start getting started. So until next time, thanks for watching. And remember to be good to each other. And by all means, please be good to yourselves. Brian out.